Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos, and welcome to this edition, live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV, of Connect With Me on Me TV, Fresno, Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6. A lot to talk about today. It's on the air, off the presses. We're talking about Syria. Somehow, CBS News reporter and anchor Charlie Rose got into Syria to interview the president, Assad, of Syria. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Walter Cronkite. We'll talk about local issues like the sale of KMJ Radio. Back with your phone calls, 436-MeTV, option 11 on this beautiful Monday morning on the showroom floor. A lot to get to on this uh, Monday morning here on the showroom floor. It's on the air, off the presses, 436 Me TV option 11. Remember, don't wait through the message, and also try to remember to turn down the sound on your television set if you can, if you want to call in and ask a question. And certainly the country at this point is wondering, what is going to happen with Syria? Is this country going to war once again? The president uh, giving out about six network television interviews on this day. He will also address the nation tomorrow. In the meantime, President Bashar Assad of Syria is doing his own little propaganda uh, this uh, day. He actually talked to CBS News reporter and anchor Charlie Rose. It was on this morning. And Charlie asked him about retaliation, if in fact the president and this country decide to bomb Syria. Here's the answer. Will there be attacks against American bases in the Middle East if there is an airstrike? You should expect everything. You should expect everything. Now, not necessarily through the government. It's not only the governments are not only not the only player in this region. You have different parties. You have different factions. You have different ideology. Uh, you have everything in this region now. So uh, you have to expect that. Expect. Tell me what you mean by expect everything. Expect every action. Including Definitely. chemical warfare? That depends if the, uh, if the rebels or the uh, terrorists in this region or any other group have it. It could happen, I don't know. We don't, I'm not fortune, a fortune teller to tell you what's going to happen. But we'd like to know more, and I think the president would like to know more, American people would like to know, you mm -hmm. know, if there's an attack, you know, what might be the repercussions and who might be engaged in those repercussions. Before the 11th of September, in my discussion with many officials in the United States, some of them are congressmen, I used to, to say that don't deal with the terrorists in, uh, as uh, playing games. It's a different story. You're going to pay the price if you're not wise in dealing with terrorists. So nobody expects, we said there are going to be a repercussion of the uh, mistaken way of dealing with it, of treating the terrorism. But nobody expected 11th of September. So you cannot expect, it's difficult for anyone to tell you what's going to happen. It's, it's an area where everything is on the brink of explosion. You have to expect everything. This is amazing. This interview by Charlie Rose, uh, Bashar Assad is the talk of the country today, and Dennis Hart, formerly of KMJ, is here to talk about it as well and talk about the uh, repercussions and how did Charlie get in the country and how is the news media measuring up? How are they covering this story about the possibility of this country going to war once again? Dennis Hart, our media expert, is going to talk about that and certainly much more. 436 Me TV, if you want to weigh in, option 11, of course, and turn down the sound on your TV set. Back with our guy, Dennis Hart, in a moment. Now, why don't you tell us the whole story right from the beginning? All right. 
from the beginning. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. My name's Friday. I carry a badge. Police officers. You any idea who the other man was? My partner's Bill Gannon. Program? We got just one big question. Yeah. When? Now on MeTV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here on the program, a lot to talk about on this uh, Monday morning on the air, off the presses, and Dennis Hart is here, our media expert. And Dennis, good to see you. Good How was your weekend? Good? Your weekend was great. A lot of sports activities out there. Oakland A's going for a division title. Giants going for last place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the A's, our A's, are up by game and a half in the they West. Are, they are as we speak, yeah. Yeah, and Serena made uh, mince meat out of her opponent, and of course. And 49ers beat Green Bay. It was a great weekend. I know. Yeah. Antoine Bolton, 13 catches yeah. for the 49ers. Raiders but boy, lost, though. Those Raiders. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. They should have one anyway yeah. hey a lot of serious stuff to talk about yes. here yes i know you're a charlie rose scott pelly cbs guy and now yeah. i've i'm yeah. suddenly become one too I, I i love the way they cover the news but um the first question is uh, we all saw this uh, interview with assad uh, this morning charlie rose doing a terrific job i saw the whole thing on the internet how did he get into Syria, in your opinion? Well, I don't know. CBS obviously is at the top of its game right now, and they have been since Scott Pelley took over the evening news a year or so ago. Their ratings yeah. are up. The newscast is the best broadcast in the United States on an evening basis. It just is. And the CBS Morning News has also become the most serious and credible morning news broadcast, as Today and Good Morning America have gone into la-la land with, uh, you know, celebrity stuff and all of this. Charlie Rose has been a great journalist, though, let's not forget, for decades. He's been on PBS. He's done a variety of things. He obviously has some sources over there who were able to smuggle him in. Remember, CBS is the only national network that's had two reporters in Syria consistently for the past months. Elizabeth Palmer has been there for weeks now reporting every night with Pelly on the evening news. They yeah. had another reporter in there last week. No other network can get anybody into <laughs> Syria. CBS has it all. The suits at NBC and ABC must have just leaped out their windows when they saw that interview this morning. I'm pretty sure Brian Williams <laughs> on Nightly News is looking to CBS every night and saying, so that's what really happened in the world today. Gosh, I'm glad I watched CBS tonight. Don't know how Charlie Rose got in there. He did, and he did a great job. But seriously, I mean, I'm looking at this from a little bit different perspective because I'm looking at the fact that President Obama is is giving out six network interviews sure. on this day. He's going to address the this country is a tomorrow. Key day, yeah. Okay, Assad jumped the gun yep. and got ahead of him yep. and mm -hmm. not only talked to Charlie Rose this thing is this interview is all over all over the world now right before Obama even says a word. Yeah, Obama has an uphill battle, I think, on this. This is going to be a defining moment for his presidency in terms of foreign policy. If he loses this congressional authorization in the House, and he may well lose it next week or the week after this vote that he's asked for. He may win it in the Senate, but he may lose it in the House. This may well cripple him for the rest of his presidency because Syria is not the most important foreign policy matter he's likely to face. Barring catastrophe, it's going to be Iran going nuclear. If he loses this vote in the House, I don't know where he goes on Iran. I don't know what powers he's going to have left. But am I correct in terms of the public relations war has Assad got a leg up now on, on Obama? Well, as of right now, as of this moment, it's Assad won, Obama nothing. Now Obama's coming to the plate, uh, not just with the networks today, as we will see tomorrow, his national address is a big one. He has to convince a reluctant, skeptical nation. Every poll shows most Americans do not want to take military action against Syria. Most congressmen are either on the fence or evenly divided. Obama has a tough road to hoe, and yeah, Assad's ahead right now. Yeah, all right. We've got a phone call here on Connect With Me on Me TV Fresno. You're on with Dennis Hart and your question. You think it's moral for the president to ignore public sentiment and just go straight to a declaration of war? Isn't this a U.N. issue? Why should the United States be policemen to the world, for, good, for goodness sakes? You'd think that uh, the U.N. would step up. What do we have the U.N. for if it's not for conflicts like this? I know your guest guests knows, so there's your question. Oh, well, you're very kind to say that I know. I don't know that I know. First of all, the U.N. is crippled right now because uh, Russia and China have veto power in the Security Council, and so they will not pass a resolution uh, authorizing force against Syria. It just won't happen. It'll be vetoed. Secondly, yes, Congress can declare war, but Obama's not asking for a declaration of war. He doesn't have to have congressional approval to bomb anybody. He has to go back under the War Powers Act to seek a continuation of, uh, of conflict over a period of time. But any president, not Obama, 
any president can go in tonight and bomb any country they want to without congressional approval. He has voluntarily gone to Congress. I suspect he's done that because he wants to be able to say if Congress turns him down, well, you know, I put it up to Congress, they said no. On the other hand, uh, if they approve him, that gives him a little bit of back More leverage. Yeah, because he knows the country's not in favor of this right now. Why He's isn't the country in favor of it, in your opinion, Be considering <laughs> the very disturbing video that we saw out of there with the women and children uh, dying? There's a 1,400 women and children who were apparently, according to this country, government sources right. that were gassed to death. Well, first of all, Iraq. We were lied to about Iraq 10 years ago right. in terms of weapons of mass destruction. The country has not gone, gotten over that. So Sec the people, they don't trust our government. That is correct. Secondly, let's go back 40 years to Vietnam. We were lied <laughs> in the Gulf of Tonkin resolution by Lyndon Johnson. So it's a, not, it's a bipartisan it's thing. It's a okay? trust issue. It is a trust issue. All, there's no issue in my mind that chemical weapons were used in Syria. But who used them? Who used them? <laughs> exactly. We don't know. Was it the opposition, the ones we we're supporting? Also, the guys we are allegedly going to support, who are they? Some of them have Al-Qaeda backing. These are not good guys versus bad guys. These are bad guys versus bad guys. Right. So we're weighing in on the side of two bad guys here. There are no good outcomes on this one that I can see in Syria. How do you rate Charlie Rose on this interview today? I rate Charlie Rose as very good but limited. Look. He's tossing questions to Assad. Assad may be lying. You, there's no way to know what he's saying. Right. He's giving Assad a platform. Is it valuable to give Assad a platform? Yes. Here's why it's valuable. Because, first of all, we see the man as a human being. We see him not as a monster, not as somebody. He's a man. He is the head of a country. Uh, he may or may not be telling us the truth. Uh, he is in the midst of a civil war in which he's fighting for his survival. The Assad family, as you know, has been had controlled Syria for decades. Yeah. This is it. The he doesn't look chaos. it. I mean, today he looked as cool as a cucumber. That probably is the most important part of the interview, that he looked okay, didn't he? Didn't look like a monster, didn't look like somebody who's sweating it. He said, look, there could be repercussions, and there will be, if the United States goes in. This is not a, a free thing. We don't get to bomb people without having people get angry at this. We don't know what the repercussions are. This is a tough sell for the president of this country. It's not that Assad's a sympathetic figure with the United States. He's right. not. It's that... As you said and I've just said, there's no trust right now in the United States government. Wouldn't matter who the president is. Any president would have a difficult time making this case. Yes, chemical weapons were used, but by whom? I'm not trying to throw a curveball at you, but I, let me ask you one thing. If you were sitting in front of Assad as a reporter, say for any network, NBC, CBS, whatever, what would be the first question you'd ask him? I think the first question would be... Um, well, it would be about chemical weapons. The world, a, lot, use them? a lot of kind the world of, yeah. believes you have used chemical weapons. You're going to tell me you haven't. Prove it to me. Right. Show me the proof right now. Right. And if he says, well, I can't, well, then why should the world believe you? Well, you know, right. because Obama's lying. That's what he'd say. Well, why should they believe that you think uh, that Obama's lying? In other words, right. the burden of proof, you've got a civil war. 100,000 people have died in your country in the last few years. Prove it to me that you didn't. And you brought up a good point just now because I think the American people are asking Obama the same thing. Absolutely. Prove it. Oh, absolutely. In uh, fact, if Assad did it, prove it. A, 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 <laughs> a classic case that I saw Friday night on the CBS Evening News, Diane Feinstein being interviewed uh, in the hallway at the Capitol, and the reporter from CBS asked her, yeah. you know, uh, most of the country's against going to war or bombing Syria, and she said, and this is classic, well, they don't know what I know. Well, Diane, I'm sorry, you got to show us. Yeah. It's not good enough to say, we don't know what you know, prove it to us. Let's take a call here before we go to break. Good morning, you're on with Dennis Hart. Dan, your question? Yeah. Good morning, John. Dennis, on this, uh, situation, I call it. Um, yeah. This should, well, according to what I've heard and what, it, what uh, it's in my mind, is this should have done, been done some time ago if he was going to do it at all during the, I guess you'd say, the riots uh, when we felt that they weren't getting anywhere, the rebels. That, that's kind of one issue. Yeah, we're really. and, uh, and, and then, you know, this, this president you know, I, I'm not a gambler, Dennis, but he, again, I use that old, he doesn't know when to hold them, and he doesn't mm -hmm. know when to fold them. You know, so you make that's the, his yeah. dilemma for him. Thank and you. And that's evidently, it comes through experience. I hate to use this one as an experience. So that was, there's more of a statement. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, but thank you. You make, All right. you make good you. points. I think the problem that we have, the, pro the problem the president has besides credibility, 
is that he drew the red line a year ago. He <laughs> should never have said, well, no, if we use, if he uses chemical weapons, that's the red line. Yeah. Well, now he used them. Somebody used them, right? Now we're backed up. Now the president sa has to say, okay, I'm going to go in because I said I was going to do something. And if I don't go in and do it, I look weak. On the other hand, if I go in and do it, there's no real proof that Assad did this, right? I'm saying that, doesn't this remind you 10 years ago of Iraq? I mean, we went down the same road here. Yeah. It's yeah. remarkable. Yeah. And that's why the American people are not backing this, because yeah. we remember what happened in Iraq. And this is why I love having you on the show, putting this all into perspective for us. Dennis Hart is our guest here, our media expert. And what an interview it was uh, this morning with Charlie Rose with President uh, Bashar Assad of uh, Syria. Your phone call is 436-ME-TV, option 11. Remember, turn down the sound. Back in a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Got a phone call, call here right off the bat. Good morning. You're on with Dennis Hart. Your question. Yeah, I just wanted to ask your uh, your guest about um, Obama going into Syria. I don't believe that we should, and I was curious as to why we're not having any military interaction as to comments on why Obama should or should not go to war or to bomb Syria. Not quite sure I understand your question. Why we're not talking about what now? About Syria. Uh, Obama's been coming on air and talking about how, you know, shot across the bow. But I haven't seen anything as far as our, mil our own military, our generals, are just saying that why they believe that they should back Obama as to going into Syria oh. and bombing them because of the chemical, you know, okay. the chemical weapons use. Right. Well, understand that uh, as commander-in-chief of the armed forces, the president has the authority to order the military into action. And that's just historically, that's constitutionally protected. The military doesn't get to decide where they go. The president gets to decide. Now, having said that, it's pretty clear from the hearings that we saw last week, the generals are not convinced yeah. that this yeah, is no, going that, to that, that work. Was my, yeah, yeah. That was my yeah. point. I, I know the constitutional angle. I was just, right. you know, I'm like, we're not seeing any general saying, yeah, Obama's right, we should go in and do what we can. Well, you and mean I'm these would have to be general. retired generals because no sitting general can dispute the President of the United States. It has to be oh, somebody they'd be out. They'd be out, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah your point is very well taken, and I think the reason for that is, and let's be straight about this, this is a muddled message that we're getting right now. Obama has said, oh, we're going to go in and we do not want to topple Assad. Well, then why are we doing this? Well, we want to send a message. Well, you know, if you want to send a message, Western Union probably could send a message to Assad, okay, saying don't okay. do it again. Yeah. We have telegraphed, we have telegraphed months, weeks ahead of time now that we're going to do something. Well, any reasonable head of state would say, maybe I should, if I have these weapons, I'm going to move them. They won't be where we People think they're going to be. People say that's what Saddam did in Iraq. He exactly, moved them. exactly. Okay, we don't know you that. Can't. This is no way to send a message to say weeks ahead of time, we're going to lob some weapons into you. We're going to lob some bombs into you. It's, another, it's a muddled message. Another call, Dennis. Hot topic. Good morning. It is. What's your question on uh, Connect With Me? My question or statement is the whole Middle East seems to be a powder keg. Yes. Well, it is. Yes. And I, I, I feel that um, we could be coming to a third world war with the situation that the planet is in right now, and I was wondering what Dennis thought about that. Well, you know, I'm not an expert on world wars, but I will absolutely agree with you. When you look at the Middle East right now, you look at Egypt, you look at Libya, you look at Syria, you look at what's happening with Iran, Iraq is falling apart again, Israel is embattled. This is not something that's come up in the last 10 years or 20 years. This goes back decades, hundreds of years, the Israeli-Arab thing goes back, it's biblical. There's no, good, of years. there's no good answer for this. I agree with you that I, I think Syria is the least of our worry. It's tragic that they've had a civil war there, okay, and 100,000 people have died. But it's a civil war. It's their civil war. I think the most important issue in the Middle East right now is Iran, and we're going to erode, perhaps, our power, our authority, if we drop some bombs on Syria, 
in the Civil War, yeah, I know that chemical weapons may have been used. It's wrong, okay? There's no question about that. But if we do that here, what happens with Iran? That's the big issue. If they go nuclear, that destabilizes virtually the entire Middle East. That puts Israel in a horrific position right. to have to respond to that. Now, let me ask you, you, may, you, you mentioned that you're not a war expert, but you are a media expert. You've been around the game for a long few time. Few years, few years. If you were hired today, like this moment, to be a media public relations advisor to the President of the United States, what would you be advising President Obama to say at this point to the networks today and to the nation tomorrow? I would ask him to be as honest and open as he could. If he thinks chemical weapons have been used, we need to see the evidence tomorrow night. It's not good enough to come on and say it's our moral imperative. Yeah, we have a lot of moral imperatives, but let's, let's be straight. Millions of people have been killed in Africa in civil wars over the last hundred years. We don't go into Africa, and why don't we go into Africa? Because they don't have oil, right? The Middle East is the oil center. We need oil. Africa has horrific genocides that have gone on. We have not intervened in most of them. Uh, I would ask him to be as honest as he could be, and I don't know that any president can be that. But if you have proof, I want to see it. That's what's going to show me tomorrow night. Now, I don't know what the proof would be, but apparently, Diane Feinstein on Friday said, well, we've seen the evidence, then the American people need to see it. Or are we not smart enough to understand what the evidence is? You're either going to take us into your confidence and we're going to back it, or you're not and we're not. Okay, another call and I got another question for you. Good morning, you're on with Dennis Hart, your question. Hello? Turn, turn, yeah, down the si turn, uh, turn down the I sound. I have a question for the, I don't know if the one with Dan is on right now about the Syria thing, is that live? Yeah, we're live now. Turn down the sound on your TV. Oh, I'm sorry. I, my TV is off. I was just wondering if there is uh, another alternative to them going in with bombs or if there's something we can do as American people. Uh, okay. No, there's, there's probably no alternative uh, militarily because this is it. Uh, we are not planning to apparently topple Mr. Assad. That's what the president says. We're going to send a message. This is an expensive message costing billions of dollars, and the problem going to be with this message, it probably will be ineffective in terms of getting rid of the targets, and also, we're going to kill some innocent civilians. Not going to be a good thing. Quickly, real quick, would you tell the president, if you were his advisor, to show the American people tomorrow night, maybe even today, the proof? Yes. You would? 100%. Okay. Show All right. Dennis Hart is here. Your phone calls, 436-ME-TV, option 11. Back with more of our show in just a moment. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Back with Dennis Hart talking about Syria, but I want to touch on a local issue real quick here. And let's uh, pull up the video of John and Jen on KMJ. Of course, uh, Dennis, uh, last week, big news here in the Central Valley. And there's John and Jen right there on KMJ. Uh, KMJ and the other four stations, uh, 105.9, 93.7, 97.9, and 101.1 sold to Cumulus. Cumulus. Go ahead. This doesn't bode well for KMJ. Okay, Cumulus. Why? Cumulus is the second biggest radio station owner in the United States. They own 500 stations. When they go in, they generally become, how do I want to put the word, bottom feeders. They cut oh. costs. Oh. KMJ has tremendous overhead because they have the local talk show hosts. They have the local news. Cumulus it's has all now, local talk. Right. Well, not all local. No, well, no, most it's syndicated of it. at night, et cetera, et cetera. Well. Cumulus, though, has to come in. They now have incurred tremendous debt to buy peak broadcasting. They are likely... They are likely to put some syndicated shows on the air. It is likely that they're going to have to lay off some people at KMJ. Wow, that's big. Let's take another call. Good morning. You're on with Dennis Hart. What's your question? Hi. Uh, basically, I believe that all death is horrible, but I would just like to know or ask if uh, anyone agrees with me that all, you know, whether you die by a bullet, a bomb blast, or a chemical, it's Shouldn't it all be treated the same? Why are we all of a sudden uh, going to potentially threaten our own sovereignty by going in after um, a country that uh, we have no strategic or national interest in just okay. for the sake of... Pre 
appreciate a hundred year old, you know. Right. I appreciate your yeah, question. The, Thank you for watching, the, Dennis. The president, the president has decided that by drawing the red line on chemical weapons, for him, for whatever reason, that was the turning point. It wasn't the civil war that's killed 100,000 people. It was the chemical weapons. He says we have to send a message that chemical weapons are unacceptable. You are correct. Every death is horrific, and there have been 98,400 deaths in Syria that we're not responding to. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to cause some deaths if we go in and bomb. Oh, yeah. So this is... You're talking Obviously, civilian deaths. I'm talking civilian yeah. deaths, yeah. right, because there are going to be some uh, bombs are not accurate 100 percent. I mean, yeah. you miss things. You miss yeah. things, et cetera. I don't see. I come back to my point. It's not easy for the president. I see no good outcomes of this either way. Okay, let's go back to KMJ. I want to show Chris Daniel, one of the talk show hosts at uh, KMJ. I want to go back to this before we go because you, know, you mentioned layoffs. They're a, a bottom feeding company. You yeah. call them a yeah. cumulus. Yeah. Okay, yeah. layoffs. If you were the GM at KMJ, which I think you should have been, by the way. <laughs> anyway, I'm no, sure I'm serious. Have. I'm serious. You should have ran KMJ <laughs> right. after Al Smith left. Anyway, um, uh, what would you be telling your staff? At this point, knowing how cumulus is, I mean, would you put up the warning signs? Yeah, I would. I would. I mean, I'd be very honest. I'd say, look, we don't know what's going to happen, but here's what we know has happened. We lost Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity to another yeah. radio station earlier in the year, and that's hurt our ratings. We've had to cut our advertising rates. Our yeah. revenue is down. We've got a new company coming in that's accumulated debt. Things are going to change. I cannot predict what's going to happen, but I can something just fasten your seatbelts. That's what I tell them. All right, quickly before we leave, I want to talk about Walter Cronkite. Where is Walter when you need him? 50 years ago, this year, 50 yes. years ago, yes. he went on the air. I want to show a clip from Scott Pelley in the CBS Evening News with the one and only Walter Cronkite. Good evening from CBS News headquarters in New York. Civil war threatens Algeria tonight. Newspaper ads heralded the arrival of a new era at CBS. 45-year-old Walter Cronkite, who'd covered wars and political conventions, the Olympics and space shots, was about to become a daily presence in America's living rooms. This is the evening edition of CBS News with Walter Cronkite. It was 15 minutes at the time, totally inadequate amount of time to do news. The new set featured a bank of black and white monitors. Variety, the showbiz magazine, called it visual razzmatazz. The technology was primitive by today's standards. Paris is worried by developments in its one-time colonial capital, and Robert Kleiman reported from there earlier today by Telstar. The government of President Charles de Gaulle... Unfortunately, Cronkite's debut was not recorded. This edition, four months later, is the only known recording of the broadcast from that era. More news in a moment after this word from Arawak. Don Hewitt, who went on to create 60 Minutes, was the producer. But Cronkite took the title managing editor. Everybody understood that Cronkite was the last word on what stories were handled and how they were handled. Dennis, the 50-year anniversary of Walter 50 Cronkite years ago last the year, And, of course, you yes. know what happened a few months later. It, Kennedy was shot and killed. Right. This was remarkable. The first 30-minute uh, evening newscast was in September 1963. The big guest that night that Walter had was John Kennedy from Hyannisport, 15-minute interview. That was the first half-hour newscast in the history of this country. 88 days later, John Kennedy is assassinated in mm -hmm. Dallas. It is remarkable the impact that Walter Cronkite, CBS News, and Television News had. The day Kennedy was assassinated, that's the day that weekend Television News grew up in the United States. Until then, you got your news from newspapers, radio, only a little bit by television, but we, all of us who were alive back then, and I was, and you were too, remember that for those four days, continuous non-commercial broadcasting by every major radio and television network in the United States, it brought this country together, probably kept the country together. Television probably kept this country from going to pieces back then. Quickly, in 30 seconds, how did the, the landscape of television change, not only when Walter went on the air, but after the Kennedy assassination? Immediately and dramatically, television news became more important to the American people. NBC News had expanded after CBS did. CBS, ABC would take years to expand, but it became more important. Television news became the instrument that people tuned to when they came home from work. 
it almost drove evening newspapers completely out of business. They became morning newspapers, dramatically changed broadcast and journalism in general in this country. They're telling us we're out of time. I want another right. half hour to talk about this. Well, Don't look, you? I'll Don't come you? Back next month. How's that? We'll do it <laughs> okay. again. All right. Dennis Hart, our media expert. Love having him on. A great interview today, and thank you for your phone calls. I appreciate it. Tomorrow, Dan Payne. He is a terrorism expert, and again, we'll be talking about Syria. Our thanks again to Dennis Hart. Back with more tomorrow.